Sometimes we need to monitor the pressure within your brain so that we can get rapid and sensitive information about how the brain is coping. This might be necessary in patients that have suffered major trauma and may be in a coma and sometimes it's used to monitor intracranial pressure in patients with hydrocephalus who may or may not have a shunt or might need one based on the results. We're going to cover where and how we insert intracranial pressure monitors or ICP bolts and try to answer some common questions about it. First of all, this kind of monitoring will usually only be performed on a neurosurgery unit or intensive care unit. Sometimes the bolt will be inserted in the emergency department of a major trauma center. This will always be done under sterile conditions so that we can reduce any risk of infection. For the purposes of this video, we'll discuss how one of these bolts is inserted into a patient who suffered a major trauma and won't be conscious. They'll already have a lot of sedation and pain relief on board. So how do we do it? First of all, a neurosurgeon will mark out a safe place for the sensor to go into. We use anatomy to guide us and know where all the most critical structures are that we need to avoid. We mark out a specific point on the scalp that will usually be on the right side of the patient's head and away from the middle. This is so that we avoid the part of the brain that controls your arms and your legs on the opposite side and also to avoid going into any major draining veins in the brain. A small cut is made in the skin. It doesn't need to be very big because the self-tapping bolts that we're going to insert isn't very thick. Next, a small hole is drilled into the skull using a hand drill to the correct depth and that's the hole that the self-tapping bolt will screw into. Below this will be the dura, which is a thick leathery covering over the brain, and this needs to be pierced so that the sensor can be passed into the brain. Then the bolt is screwed into place. After that, we're ready to pass the sensor into the brain, and it doesn't need to go in very far, usually only about 20 millimeters or so. A plastic locking nut keeps the sensor in place and doesn't let it slide in and out and that's it. The wire might be stitched down to the scalp to prevent it from being pulled out. The sensor is connected up to a monitor and the pressure reading will be used to guide your treatment. A common question is how long will it stay in for? We try not to keep these sensors in for too long, but if a patient has had a severe brain injury, they're likely to need one for as long as they're unconscious. Once they've woken up and we can gauge how they're doing using clinical examination, the whole thing can come out. If the bolt was put in to monitor pressure in someone who's awake, it usually stays in so that we can monitor the pressure in the brain for about 24 to 48 hours. How is it removed? Taking it out simply involves cutting any anchoring stitches, pulling out the sensor, and then unscrewing the plastic bolt from the skull. The skin is then stitched close. You might feel a small bump afterwards, and that might just be a bit of blood underneath the skin or a tiny bit of brain fluid that's leaked out. That can go away in about the same amount of time that a bruise normally would up to a week or two. Are bolts an infection risk? So anything that we insert into the brain that's man-made is an infection risk, but luckily the infection rates from ICP bolts are very low, and that's less than a percent. Are there any other complications other than infection? The main things that we usually look out for other than infection is bleeding along the track of the sensor as it's gone into the brain. Because of the location where we insert these monitors, a bleed into the brain after inserting one of these rarely does any significant damage. Sometimes a bleed is more likely in patients that have suffered severe trauma because the normal way that their blood clots is affected by the trauma itself. Finally, the sensors themselves are really delicate so sometimes they may not read properly or give us a pressure, especially if they've been manhandled or if they've been packaged incorrectly. Sometimes they're pulled out when a patient is rolled in the intensive care, for example, and if that happens, you might need another one inserted. Those are the main things, bleeding, infection, and if it comes out, you might need another one put in. I hope this video has been useful for you or if you've got a relative that's had a bolt put in. The video is supported by the NIHR Global Health Research Group on Neurotrauma, who are trying to make global neurosurgical outcomes better across the world, especially in low middle income countries. If you've watched this video on how a bolt is inserted, it's gonna be good to actually look at 
how we use the readings to support patients who need medical treatment for high intracranial pressure. There will also be a video on the Monroe Kelly Doctrine, which is how we understand why pressure rises within the brain. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.